Some churches this time around are after their own type of doctrine. They don't even talk about the power of God. They never preach about God's wrath that shall befall you as a sinner if you don't repent and give your life to God Almighty. What they are after now is what I always call their own personal interest. You know what? Members of God's gospel, they are seeing them as money-making machine. They are seeing them as cash cow. They don't even care about how they live their life, where they generate the money from, in as much as you flaunt the money in the altar, you drop your monies in the offering board. They are okay. They are not even after how you will live your life after you die where your soul shall go they don't even care about that my people this is the church of today mama where are you mama where are you your baby is speaking your baby is speaking mama where are you your baby is speaking he's all hey, my baby crap. i know my baby no color my baby i know my baby this is your baby, the baby you give me. In big brother ninja, I be you don't forget. It's not my own, it's your own, it's not my own, it's your own. I know my baby, it's your own, it's not my own, it's your own. Baby you are married, go and meet your husband. Hey, baby you, you are married, go and meet your husband. Hey, you know that they are girl. You see, when I always say that sin starts from the church, people will think I don't know what I am talking about. The Bible made us to understand that judgment will start from the church. The church that is an institution is like every other institution. But why the Bible says that judgment will start from the church is because that is where its presence dwells. The, and as an institution, we should note that the church is a building used for public Christian worship. That is the reason why judgment will begin from the church. The Bible did not say that judgment will begin from any other institution like the school where we acquire knowledge. It did not say that it will start from the politician houses, even though we all know that politicians are in there to enrich themselves and they are in there as well for their selfish political reasons but that of the church which is supposed to be an institution and an organization where the presence of god dwells shouldn't be a place of sin but the kind of churches we have today they are scared to even preach for people to repent of their sins and be saved because of fear or favor there are so many churches who aren't preaching salvation anymore instead what they are talking about is the wealth god what do i mean by the word god they are not preaching about prosperity about riches about breakthrough they have forgotten that the church pertain to a place of worship. It's supposed to be an assembly where serious-minded individuals or group of people who perform acts of worship and devotion to a divine being. What am I talking about here? I'm talking about sin from the pulpits, sin in the church. There are so many pastors that are scared to tell someone when he or she does something wrong all because of if they say such a word to you you might withdraw that tithe and offering you give to them which doesn't go to the almighty god here we are how we are talking about salvation of one soul they don't even reason that anymore you will hear them say that if you don't bring your tithe, if you don't bring your offering to the house of the Lord, you are robbing God. Fine and good. 
in as much as the Bible says that, but the main priority in life, and as the Bible says, is that there will be rejoice of life over one sinner that repents. I have never heard that there will be rejoicing in heaven over one person that gave his or her tithes, my people. So, sin in the church started from the church. Whether you like it or not, whether you want to take it or you leave it. Because I have seen a lot of pastors who commit blunders from the temple, who lay courses from the pulpits. Same church as an institution is where you will see all manner of dresses as if people are going to clubhouses. It's the same church. You will see choirs wearing all kinds of clothes to expose their body in order to seduce people who they are in love or being infatuated with. My people, there are lots of things which I cannot even mention all in this video. Let's continue. I'll talk to the men for just a second. Men, when I talk about temptation, you know what one of the greatest temptations is, and it's her. You can't walk out of this building, you can't go anywhere in public and not see flesh, nudity, uh, seductresses, dressing to appeal, dressing to look good. You know what I'm talking about. And short and low, and here are men who want to live right. Men that want to be holy. They got nowhere to turn because in a 360 degree circle, it's everywhere. But the problem is, is that they have to see it in church. No man ought to have to fight that in church. Ladies, girls, when you get up to get dressed to come to church, you need to realize you're coming to the holy house of God. You ought not to come here to show off, wait, your legs. And if you're constantly having to fight to stay decent, you got the wrong wardrobe on. And not just for church, but for anywhere else. Now, I am not mad. I'm just trying to tell you the truth. You need to change wardrobes. This is not a place to find a date. This is not a place to find a new husband. This is a place where you come in and the Spirit of God fills it and Jesus is here and His holiness is here and you ought not to be the cause for a man having to fight his flesh in a service. Well, Pastor, what about the men? I've had no complaints about a man whose witch's legs were too short. <laughs> Here's another one. But Pastor, that's our culture. Now hear me. When you get saved, you change cultures. I don't care what you call it. French, Russian, Romanian, I don't care what it is. When you get saved, you become a Christian and you conduct yourself as a Christian and you dress modestly for the glory of God everywhere you go. 